We followed the rough mountain ranges of the Himalayas to find the source of the happiness we see in the people of Bhutan. They live in harmony with nature and in thanksgiving for each day. The secret of happiness lies in that simple truth. I am in a Buddhist country, searching for millinery roots of the kingdom of Bhutan. This is when everyone becomes one. The Millennium Old Festival begins now. Bhutan is an eight hour long flight away from Korea. The small kingdom lies to the east of the Himalayas between China and India. Today is my last day in Bhutan and I will be visiting Gasa, which is close to the Himalayas. And drive five hours to Thimphu, the capital of Bhutan. Gasa is a village high in the mountains at an elevation of some 3,000 meters. It is closer to the Himalayas than flatland. This forest reminds me of a jungle in tropical regions. Untainted nature breathes life, competing with nothing but itself. The innocent lives enjoy happiness in untainted nature. As I face this rare and precious nature in its primitive state, I wonder about the lives of the people in this region that must bask in it. On my way out of the forest, I run into a calf that seems to have just started walking. A herd of cows shows up out of nowhere and move along with the people. A short hike up the mountain will lead us to Gasa, where a vast meadow stretches out. There, nomadic people live with herds of dozens of cows to as many as hundreds. Their farm is, of course, the green pasture of the highlands. A family was packing their belongings. It doesn't seem like much, but this is everything they have. It's actually more than usual because a baby was recently born. How is it possible for them to maintain a life with such simple household goods? So yesterday evening, uh -huh. they brought their cow here. Uh -huh. Last night they camped here. And now they are going to migrate. Now they are going to take their cow to the uh, down. The nomadic family moves around the meadows of the highlands and search for grass, according to the changing seasons. To them, anything other than their necessities becomes a burden. Right then, the family milks their cows, here at the pasture before they leave on their long journey. All they use to milk the cows are their hands. The fresh milk adds up to quite a large amount with the milk from the day before. 
However, it isn't enough for the family of seven to survive on. <laughs> the family drinks some of the milk, but most of it is used to make cheese or butter that is sold in markets. They used to make the cheese and butter manually, stirring it by hand, but they recently bought a centrifuge and now make it more easily. When milk is put in the centrifuge, the fat, which is lighter, floats to the top due to the centrifugal force, and that is solidified into butter. I taste it before it's solidified. Wow. <laughs> The rest is boiled and left to solidify, which becomes cheese. Being a Buddhist country, not much meat is consumed in Bhutan, leaving cheese and butter to be their main sources of protein and fat. This is fresh cheese. It is better than I expected, and I inhale it down. Yeah. <laughs> It must be time for them to leave. The family members start collecting their belongings. To these people, time isn't about numbers on a clock, but which part of the mountain the sun is shining upon and when the cattle are hungry. This is why they are relaxed and laid back unlike those of us who always live in a time of crunch. They lead a happy life without relying on modern technology. The secret to their joyous life is rather simple. I say goodbye to the nomadic family and leave the village. On my way, I meet young students who are on their way to school. They look happy, so I strike up a conversation with them. Where is your home? Ah, behind the hill. Ah, 저 반대편 마을에서 여기까지 지금 걸어왔대요. How long does it take from your home to here? Five kilometers. 성인 남자 걸음으로도 한 5km면 50분에서 1시간 정도 걸리는 거리인데 그걸 매일 이렇게 걸어서 등하교를 하고 있네요. What is this? Can I ask you? 아, 런치. 아, 아, 오케이. 아, 다들 이렇게 도시락 하나씩 들고 학교 가네요. 아, can I open it? They seem shy. <laughs> The younger sister shows me her lunch. <laughs> this reminds me of when I used to go to school in a rural part of Korea. I am sad I could only talk to the children briefly, but I have a long and tough way to go, so I leave before it gets too late. My eyes settle on a villager sitting near the street alone as I look out the window during our drive along the road. 
He seems to be waiting for something. So I get off and say hi to him. This one is flower. 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 Yes, in order to offer for the God. He used to keep this one most. He opens his sack to show us the Ula Choto, a type of plant he plans to sell at a market. Ula Choto. Ula means grow. Choto means grow bit. Ula Choto. Ah, celebrity. Like a bit. Ula Choto. Ula. Grow. Grow bit. Like grow bit. This is for the food. What is this interestingly shaped plant used for? Very delicious. And it's expensive also. Ila don't can never done it. Don't have it. And both of us chillie la. Oh la, ane think you ya ten never chop a catch chip dia ba. Hmm. Ane chop a dam dam catch chip dia ba. Yes. Nobody know. He is waiting patiently for a ride that may never come to sell the herbs. If you walk, then it's impossible to. The farm is in the cash that the plant is sold and then sold to the market. The market is in 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 the market. 지나가는 차를 기다리고 계시는데 다행히 운이 좋으면 푸나카를 가실 수 있고 차를 못 잡으면 그냥 오늘은 공치는 거죠. 다시 대구로 들어가셔야 되고. The lives of these people may seem slow and uncomfortable. However, the people I meet here don't ever rush and don't strive for a richer life. I can't understand everything through my short encounter with them, but I am able to learn one thing the fact that they are living in times that are long forgotten to us. And here I find a beautiful view created through their attitude of life. This old building stands just like it used to in the past in the former capital city. My eyes are called the Punakha Jong. It's called the Mochu and Puchu. 어머니 강과 아버지 강이 만나는 합수부에 서 있습니다. 지금 현재 수도인 팀푸가 수도가 되기 전까지 대략 한 300년 동안 이곳이 그 수도, 그 정부 청사 기능을 했다고 해요. Punaka Diesel became more famous a few years ago when the current king held his wedding here. We can assume how they respect tradition. My heart is already at the capital city of Thimphu, the destination of today's trip. What catches my eye as we draw closer to the capital is the world's biggest statue of Buddha, made of bronze instead of stone and stands 51 meters tall. The city of Chui, the city of Chui, is the highest of the world's 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 they are putting the Buddhist teachings of mercy and sharing into practice. With 120,000 people, Thimphu is the biggest city in Bhutan and a romantic city where the first day it snows is a holiday. The hand signals of the traffic police are impressive. Thimphu is the only capital in the world without traffic lights. They installed traffic lights for the first time a few years ago, but they aren't used because the locals thought it was impersonal. Something seems to be going on in front of an automobile repair shop in the city. It looks similar to wedding cars being decorated. Because today is Bishokarma day, so we have to decorate our vehicles. Vishva Karman is the god of crafts and architecture. He watches over the safety of blacksmiths, carpenters and laborers who work with machinery.
Mechanics offer tools at the altar today and wish for peace and prosperity for their garages. When they are done offering prayers, the puja, a Hindu service, takes place. The reason we can see different cultures in Bhutan, where most of the population is Buddhist, is because they respect coexistence, which is something that is highly regarded. Nothing is better than a marketplace to see how the locals live. The weekend market held in the center of Thimpu is one of them. What is this? The weekend market that is held from Fridays to Sundays is where a large amount of farm goods from all over Bhutan are sold every week. What is the name? Alu. 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 At the market, the goods are sold by weight on a scale. It is interesting to see that this potato shop uses rocks and weights made of iron. Another characteristic of this market is that you don't have to search for organic foods. This is because the people of Bhutan don't use any chemical fertilizers when they farm. After fruits and vegetables, cheese and butter have the biggest variety. Something at a cheese store stimulates my curiosity. Excuse me. Uh, what is this? Yes, yes, yes. Chia. Yes, yes, yes. Chia. Oh, chia. Ah. And it is only there. Made with yak. Yes. Here, you can use cheese to make the cheese. Oh, okay. Mm. Chia. 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 옥수수를 이렇게 씹을 때처럼 딱딱하지만 고소한 그런 향이 딱 올라옵니다. 싱베. They dry it to bring it from the east where the cheese is made because the transporting it takes a while. It goes the same for meat that is dried or smoked to keep it from rotting. 구상보. What is that? 이 야기. This one is um, yaks. I was in for a hot surprise, eating it without knowing what it was. Oh! 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 Oh, <laughs> 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 I am on my way to visit the people I really wanted to see if I came to Bhutan. The temple was in the middle of their dawn service.
the monks of Chimi Lakang, wake up at five every morning and start their day by reciting Buddhist scriptures. There are people I especially want to meet out of the monks who are training at this temple. They are the young monks with their shaved heads and small bodies covered in bright red robes. They may have shaved their heads and are dressed in monks' robes, but they are still little boys. I am looking forward to my journey with these innocent young monks. The dawn service is finally over. The day for these young monks starts with the smoke of cypress, which is known to purify the areas it reaches. Now it is time for them to learn the Buddhist scriptures. They have to cover a certain amount to receive a higher score, so they read the scriptures over and over again. They have a limited amount of time to study, so it is one of the more difficult classes. It is not easy to become a monk. However, the people of Bhutan want at least one person in the family to become a monk. They believe it will bring peace to the family. However, the young monks start dozing off one by one as the class continues, unaware of their parents' hopes. Some monks are done memorizing the scriptures while others were nodding off. All they have to do is recite it in front of their teacher. And the results are... Thankfully, he seems to have passed. Yes, he did good. Maybe they are motivated by their friend's success in passing the test. The monks who are dozing off all bury their heads in the scripture. Another student walks up to the teacher. He tries his best, but the teacher doesn't look too happy. He fails to pass. However, some monks are more interested in the surroundings than the test. These two are new monks who joined the Buddhist priesthood earlier this year. My name is Clipper. Yes, 13 years. 13 years. The morning classes end while the young monks experience mixed feelings of joy and sadness. Now it's time to present offerings to Buddha, a time to forget about their hardships after joining the priesthood. However, to the young monks, even this time is an extension of training. They even memorize Buddhist scriptures before eating. That's not it. They rub the rice between their hands. Then they lay it down on the table. What kind of meaning does this hold? It's hard to understand the action of them rubbing the rice between their hands and thanking the gods. But the young monks seem to take a step closer to Buddha through this lifestyle.
The offering time is over. The young monks start a soccer match in the temple's yard. They are no different from other kids their age when they are playing sports. <laughs> the first day they became a monk, the young children cried because they were sad to leave home. But on top of that, they had to shave their heads. They miss their moms time to time, but they are quite used to waking up for the dawn services and wearing their Buddhist robes instead of regular clothes. If my trip to Bhutan were an abstract picture that stood for tradition and nature so far, from now on it will remind me of the innocent faces of the young monks. I leave the young monks and head for the capital city of Thimphu once again. The city is bustling with people for a change. The streets are closed to traffic, but people fill them, dressed up from head to toe. Stores that sell traditional costumes are lined up on one side of the street. I wonder why the entire city is dressed up and ask some people what is going on. We were in occasions and uh, when we were schools and all that. It's a hand to one. Mm -hmm. uh, it's uh, my mother weave, so she made this for me. And this, uh, I think this is exported from other countries. It's fair to come down for us. You know, we call it uh, you know, the largest pocket, largest pocket in the world. You inside, <laughs> like show me and all. It goes like this. You can fit it. Till here, till it back. <laughs> Thank you very much. Today, the biggest festival of Bhutan will be held in Thimphu. The festival is the reason people are dressed up in traditional clothes. Not even locals can enter unless they are dressed in traditional dress. <laughs> Shechu is Bhutan's largest Buddhist festival held twice a year, once in Thimphu during fall and once in Paro, the second biggest city of Bhutan in the spring. The people of Bhutan gather from all parts of the country to enjoy this huge festival. Along with the belief that those who participate in the festival are blessed, they are here to see J. Kenpu, the chief Buddhist leader and loyal Buddhist. Soon the performance announcing the beginning of the festival will be held. The unique gestures of the performers who are wearing animal masks draw tourists from all over the country annually. The performance originated from a mask that was created for propagation by Guru Rinpoche, the legendary man who spread Buddhism in Bhutan for the first time 1,200 years ago. First, a ritual is held to wish for good luck. The main theme is that the good god defeats the bad god and finds peace. However, the weapon looks interesting. The faces of the onlookers of Bhutan are also interesting. The weapon used in the fight between good and evil is a phallus that stands for strength and manliness. 
Since the old times, the phallus stood for fertility and prosperity in many cultures around the world. However, it is used as a weapon in Bhutan. What kind of meaning does it hold? We were able to find the answer to it backstage. Since I'm here, they let me take a look at the green room. The various animal masks will all be used in the festival that will be held over the next three days. One of the performers puts a mask on, saying that it's the character he is playing. It stands for the loyalty that doesn't fall for the temptation of evil. Uh, you want to test our local wine? Local wine? Yeah. Okay. It's not just any wine, but one that is used in performances. Is it Ara? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Ara. 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 <laughs> they are all focused on the festival these days. This is a Buddhist festival of the Kingdom of Bhutan, created through the restoration of a history of a thousand years. Thimpu Sekchu has its roots deep in this land, just like its relationship with Buddhism. The people of Bhutan come together as one within the festival. These are my last moments in Bhutan. I stand before the Himalayas, which was the first thing I saw in Bhutan, and look back at my journey. The lives of the people of Bhutan are like this view. My journey was about the hearts of these people, not a city or a country. <laughs>